<laughs> you're like, you have to do that again. <laughs> no, don't. Uh, this is my friend Jalapeno. <laughs> it goes good with a pasada or a nejo. It actually is kind of catchy. Yeah. Is it good? Yes, although mostly I just taste the ancho reyes, which is not a bad thing. I muddled jalapeno peppers in the bottom, but it's not it's not that all that spicy. I muddled jalapeno peppers in the bottom. And then I've got. Oh, he may have turned down. I have jalapeno. There. I hear echo. You hear echo? Not anymore because he muted himself. Oh. <laughs> all right. Hello, people of the YouTube world. Look at all these people in here. Whoa. People of the YouTube world. YouTube world. Wait, Greetings. You already drunk? That was literally, I've had like three sips of this drink. It is tequila, though, and Ancho Reyes. It's like blazing hot in here. It's warm, yeah. Well, probably because you've been drinking and running around. Well, I've been running around. Yeah. So the reason I'm drinking tonight is because uh, we've got JT on here. And between JT and Matt, Kimbra's not going to get a word in. <laughs> so uh, Who's talking now? I'm just letting everyone know, the more I drink, the more I talk. So my plan is to talk. That sounds like that bean poem. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you tooth, the more you tooth, the better you feel. So eat beans with every meal. Okay. You could do that with alcohol and Kimber talking somehow. That would. Okay, go ahead and come up with that. Mm, I don't, I can't, I can't, I got nothing. Wine, wine, so divine. The more you drink, the more you think. No, that's not, no. <laughs> Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I thought that was pretty clever. Mm -hmm. Clever, just not, just not on target. <laughs> yeah, right. It worked for me. It worked for me. It was good, right? <laughs> uh, there's Ed, Hello. first one in there. And uh, we got C Day thinking that he was going to be first. <laughs> Jokes. I on tried. You. I really did try. <laughs> no one can beat the rogue. No. Uh, hey, and uh, there's Rebecca. 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 And More fun if you roll the R's. Stacy, well, that, that doesn't matter. Well, rip. There we go. Rip. Rip. Uh, Stacy and people saying hi, 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 hi. Hello, hi, hello. Hi, hi. Hello. Professor. Hello. hello. hello Professor. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, Anita. Hello, Anita. Roddy. There's Rebecca's finally saying hi to us instead of everyone else. It's <laughs> because we're here now. It's because we're here now. Because <laughs> I remember that excuse. Totally same, though. Right. <laughs> oh, Scott says, you guys are so loud, I can hear you from California. Wow. Wow. Are we like really loud? No, it sounds good on my end. Okay. Ruffles have <laughs> ridges. <laughs> Ruffles have ridges. <laughs> Are we at the end? That's it. We're at the end. All six of them. All six of them. That was a lot of chatter for six people. I know they just really love talking to each other. That, that's good though. <laughs> sure. That, that's good. Uh, well, welcome, Bonvini. We have obviously a special guest tonight. We've got JT from Sea Days because he just got back from a cruise, and uh, it was a pretty cool cruise. I mean, what cruise isn't a pretty cool cruise? It was an extra cool cruise because one, he cruised out of Puerto Rico, and two, um, it was eight nights, right? Eight nights? No, seven. seven. Seven, seven nights, nights, but it was all port stops all the time. No sea days, even though his podcast is sea days. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I will, although I had a great time, and this was probably the best cruise we've ever had. I don't know if I would ever do that many ports ever again. It was, was just, a lot. You don't have to get off, though. as You I, you didn't, at least one of them, right? 
Right. And so here was the plan initially because I had a, a group on. going. I've got to interrupt you. You said oh. best cruise you've ever had. I'm pretty sure that you had a cruise with me and Matt, and that was a pretty great cruise. Okay, we have one A and one B. And oh. you know, here's what's <laughs> Just nothing with if you mentioned that today. Here's something funny. I am not normally a person that keeps the um key cards, right? It's just not my thing. I, but I know some people I love to do it. So today I'm cleaning out in our entryway, which you guys have been to. I've got a, a little bit, a, a little bowl that my cousin made for me. It's wood and, and some other stuff. It's gorgeous. And I'm cleaning it out today because I haven't worked in some time. Guess what I happen to find at the bottom of that bowl? A cruise key card? For MSC. <laughs> That's cool. And I'm sitting there like, oh man, what a what a great time! That was great, but this group cruise was just a little bit better. But nonetheless, like I said, one A, one B. Your fault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I'm pretty Your sure fault. I was tons of fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hence the nickname HT. That's true. We've That's got, where that yeah, came from. Yeah. We've got HT and boring Matt who just wants to swim all day, but that's great too because <laughs> I enjoyed that part too. But um, so many sea days was just so much, and initially our, our plan was, and I know people love St. Thomas and St. Martin, but those are ports that we all usually frequent a lot, and. Um, because I there was just so much I can't remember every port in case people ask I'm trying to pull it up. Um, <laughs> so our, our plan was St. Thomas and St. Martin. We'll go do some shopping, have a couple beverages, maybe get some food, and then go back on the ship. And then my buddy from back home in San Diego, Rick, decided to join us. And he's like, "Man, you and I got to go snorkeling, just you and me." So. We ended up snorkeling, and gosh, I don't remember of the all the ports. Uh, let me see. Uh, man, I don't even remember. Uh, but I took the day to hang out with my boy, and it was amazing. And for you, I, w I think, was it Barbados? Oh, man. The reef just wasn't there. Um, it was like, I think I've heard you talk about in the past, both of you. And, and I'll figure out what it was. I want to say it was no. I want to say it was Barbados. I think, but like, <clears throat> excuse me. There was live rock everywhere, branch rock. If I'm in an in, a, in an aquarium, it's gorgeous, right? But the reef just was dead. <laughs> and but I saw fish. I saw what I don't think belonged there. So I was probably off, but I saw a queen parrot fish and those do are queen parrots. But, and this was probably like, I've had queen parrots in reef tanks or in tanks in fish only tanks. And when they get bigger, they're beautiful. And when I say this fish wasn't 18 inches and had the pink, he was beautiful. But right next to him was the largest conch I've ever seen, too. So I was like, oh, conch, oh, parrot, oh, oh. <laughs> so I was confused. But the reef itself just wasn't in the best of shape. I, was, I, it I off, was it off the shore or was it off a boat? So we took a catamaran hmm. um, from the main dock for an hour and a half to the snorkel site. Oh, okay. And I want to say we were probably 250, 250 yards off the shore, away from shore. Okay. Okay. But we were probably still in 30 feet of water. Okay. Yeah. That should be healthy coral though at that point. Right. Yeah. So like, and most of the people were not fish people. We're not snorkelers, right? They don't know or coral people, mm -hmm. but you, Matt, especially, and you, Kimber, are definitely learning more and more every day. Me being in, in the hobby for years and years and, and have been snorkeling many places, 
I mean, I'm not Aquaman like you, but um, I would pull up on a, there's Vossi, my cat. I would pull up on a brain coral that was literally, and you know how big they get, right? They can mm -hmm. be really big, three, four. I've seen brain coral five feet across. Sure. But I would pull up, up pull up on one, dive, you know, snorkel, up, swim up on one, and six inches was alive. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, you know, uh, pieces of branch rock, just like, oh man, if I had an aquarium, hmm. I would like try to smuggle this stuff out because it's beautiful. <laughs> but it's obvious it's all bleached. It, it's bad. But there was still anything from like what I thought was a a. a a uh, uh, queen, um, queen conch. No, no, that was definitely oh. there. Oh, no, the queen the, parrot. Yes, uh, yellowtail snapper, mm -hmm. grunts, uh, um, squirrel fish, uh, just a lot of fish, right? So there was a lot of fish there. Just the coral itself just was not healthy. Most people probably who are snorkeling for the first couple times are not going to pay attention to that. Right. You know, there's a, a, a yellowtail snapper. Oh, hey, there's. Right, right. Yeah. But for you guys and me, even though I'm not a scuba guy like you guys, I still know, understand about the 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 reef and, and a healthy reef or an unhealthy reef. Mm -hmm. And uh it definitely wasn't that nice as far mm -hmm. as a coral wise, but the fish life was just, it was, it was pretty good. It was really good. Well, that's, that's good. At least there was a lot of fish diversity and stuff there. That's um, funny. There's my cat again. <laughs> Rebecca noticed that she yeah. said, that's a big cat. I'm going to jump in real quick for a few of these. Scott said, I agree with JT. I took a cruise out of Puerto Rico with no sea days on Royal Caribbean. And by day four, we were exhausted of excursions. And yep. let me let me reply to that. Let me reply to that real quick. Before you um, do that, hi Todd. Hey Todd. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> hey Todd. Um, and hey, and I did. I thought, and it was it was an amazing cruise. It was something irregular for multiple reasons, and there was a lot of firsts. Right? It was out of San Juan. Most people, I'm pin you on a stick. Um, most people. Cruise to San Juan for the day, you know, for one day or for a half day, and mm -hmm. then leave. So this was uber unique to cruise out of San Juan. Um, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people are loyal to Royal, loyal to uh, Carnival, to Norwegian. So some of, of my group had never cruised Norwegian. So you know, it, was a, it was a lot of new, and it was a Hey, there's Marty. Um, a lot of people, it was a brand new ship too. You know, the Viva had only been out, what, since November, December. So it was a new ship to, hold on, that cat's going to drive me crazy. Hold on. Because <laughs> he's going to make noise. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Come on. Here. Let me see if I can get all the. Because yeah. when he's ready, he'll come back in anyways. He'll open the door. Um I'm getting all the tequila off this jalapeno so he can have a little bit. You want some jalapeno? Oh, do they? That's interesting. They don't, so they're like chickens. They don't have that sensory. I don't know. He had a piece the other day and ate it, but he's not, he may not. He's probably made, ready for bed. Yeah, he's probably too late now. His light is You don't want jalapeno? Yeah. Yeah, it's Australian jalapeno. Come on. Come on. All right, fine. I'll eat it myself. Okay. Come on. Uh, so Anita said, we had a lot of ports in a row and it was tiring. So the sea days hmm. we looked forward to so we could rest a bit. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, I, I, I agree completely. I just, I didn't know because I thought, man, this is so interesting. Some of these ports, a lot of people don't get to because if you cruise out of San Juan, you can get a little bit further. Right. And really what I didn't understand is they just made a big circle. Okay. Um. Was it Barbados? I'm looking St. Lucia. I don't. Yes. Is Barbados, where Blue Horizon Diving is from. No, they're no. from um, Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah. All them B words. B -b 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 Bermuda. Uh, and Stacy says, I generally start strong and on the go on a cruise, and then get tired and want to stay on the ship. 
Yeah, I can see it. Like, if you were like, Matt, plan a perfect cruise, I'd probably be like, port, 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 port. But now that I have a little more experience, I'd be like, eh, there was CD in there for me to, like, recuperate and port, force port, me. Port, port, CD, port, port, CD. Yeah, yeah. Force oh. me to relax a little bit and give me a little bit of a of a breather to just, like, chill, to, like, look at my video that I've taken or whatever and just kind of, like, reflect on the experiences, that kind of thing. And I would, so, I would not be able to stay on the ship. Like if I'm in a port, unless it's a port I've been to a whole bunch of times and I don't like it that much, I would have a hard time not getting off the ship because I'd be like, I don't care if I'm tired and I can't move. I'm, I'm here. When am I going to be here again? So I would well, struggle with that, even though like, I should Let's just be there. real, right? St. Thomas has some of the best views in the world. It's a beautiful island, yeah. And and that was one of the ports initially we were we've been there so many times we were gonna skip it and stay on Jen and I were gonna skip it and stay on board. And then we ended up booking an excursion. So what I did was for my group, and I told Kimber we weren't gonna talk about groups, but this this excursion I think was ultimately really unique. Maybe not for you two, because you and I talked about you know, you said, well, why don't you come down to the aquarium and you could do, uh, you guys have something there at the aquarium where it's very similar. The, sea track. The, sea track. Is that the scooter or is that the helmet? It's just the helmet. It's just the helmet. You walk with sea, with normal sea track, you walk. It's not the scooter. Okay. Thing. So it's it's similar, but not yet, yet not the same, right? Yep. But so it was me and Jen and five other people in St. Thomas. And I will tell you this. That was one of the, and, and I'll say it, 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 it is the uh, boss underwater, underwater excursion, I think is what it's called. It was not even close, by far the best excursion I've ever done, ever. And I've been Caribbean, the Pacific, Mexican Riviera, Southern Caribbean, and, and here's the reason why. Because some of the people in my group had never done anything like that. Hmm. And I'm a water guy. You know, I've, I've got a fish tattoo. And, you know, you and I have talked many, many times. It was just because I was able to share my love for the water or my love for the environment with five other people other than my wife. And at the end of it, uh, my buddy Rick, who's a waterman, he's a surfer, man. Uh, he surfs. So he does the water for something a little bit different than I do, but he gets where I'm coming from because he understands the environment and nature and stuff like that. So I went to everybody in the group and I said, now that you've experienced something like this, what do you think about snorkeling? What do you think about doing an excursion like this? And every one of them said, except for one, every one of them said, oh, yes, it's changing my thoughts about excursions and being in the water so of course i'm like win for everything <laughs> win for everybody so then the one guy i went to him and i said you know derek what what you enjoy yourself right he goes yeah i did but you wouldn't do this again he goes it depends on who i'm with jt if i'm with you guys i'll do it again he goes, but it's not something I'm going to go out and look for because it's just not what I do. I go, but I won. You would do it again with me and my buddies, my boys, but you just, it's just not something you do. So I took that as a win, right? That, if he just said, no, I would never, ever do it again, it's not a win for me. But I, I got people to experience stuff that they've never experienced. And he would like, yeah, with, you, with the right group, I would do it again. Um at one point, so here, here's a funny story. So you, what the Boss Underwater Adventure is, it's a scooter, right? And so we had, in my group, we had us plus two, seven, two more. I think they had nine scooters out in one, one shot. And, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, um, Jen is on one, and there's a guy right next to her, and you look like Marty when you did that. I'm just saying. Um, when you look that salt, you're like, no, you look just like Marty. Um, 
So Jen, one guy, yes. And they like take off real quick and they're gone. I could barely see them. And I got all these people passing us by. And when we got done, I, I went to the captain. I'm like, what's that all about? He goes, well, there's two things there. He goes, I knew you were a swimmer. And you're a little bit bigger than everybody else. So, unfortunately, your scooter just can't go as fast. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, right? So, it didn't bother me. I'm, they, they put a, a buoy on it, on the top of it, tied by rope, so they can keep you at about 8 to 10 feet. Uh, okay. And that's, that's not optimum, but he said, the captain did say, keep your eyes looking all around. Don't just look in front of you. Don't look side to side, look down, right? Because we did pull up on this old, like, I don't remember the name, but it was a old U.S. ship that was like 300 feet long. I wouldn't call that a ship. That's a big boat. And over the years, it's in the hurricanes and the storms, it's moved, right? So it didn't look all that special, but there was fish all over it. So that was nice. But you were at about a constant eight feet. Well, you only get to use the scooter like 30 minutes because you've got nine, 50 something people on the boat. So everybody's got to get a whack at it. And once you get off, you can go snorkel. And that's where a lot of special stuff really happened. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm riding this scooter and you control the throttle on the right. And there's other stuff on the left, which, um, which is the, uh, oxygen and the allowing the it to sink or or oh, ride okay. right yeah. because you get in they call it the bell you mm -hmm. have to go underneath the water and get in the bell right <laughs> and it's loud yeah yeah blah, 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 all the <laughs> stuff so at first i didn't know what to expect but um so i'm balancing out i you know unclog my ears two or three times I'm good. I'm going as fast as this little underwater scooter can go. And one of my friends who's, she's a friend, but she's also a customer, but we've cruised with her a few times and her and I talk all the time. I look out my, my right eye and her name is Kathy. Here comes Kathy. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and underwater, I hear her laughing <laughs> and I'm like, she's got the throttle, the, the go button, the green button on one hand. And the other hand, she's got her camera. <laughs> and I hear her laughing, and I'm like, Kathy's having her best life. I'm, I'm, I've won, <laughs> right? So here she comes. She crosses me. She's having a good time. I don't care. So I'm still trying to catch up to Jen. About five or so minutes later, here comes Kathy again, <laughs> the opposite direction. Same thing, camera, throttle. And I mean, I can literally hear her laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, again, I've done my job as the as the originator of the group. I'm having a good time. All seven of us are having a good time. So I'm still going, doo, 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 you know, doing my thing. And I'm seeing tangs and wrasses and everything I can think of. Here she comes again for a <laughs> third time. And I'm just like, okay, Kathy's living her best life. We take the scooters back and then we all start to snorkel. And, and I see some amazing fish. Uh, I see, I think I saw a cuttlefish, but I'm not sure. It was pretty quick. See, it wouldn't be a cuttlefish. It could be a Caribbean reef squid, though. They called them specifically cuttlefish. So there, there aren't what? any cuttlefish in the Caribbean, but Caribbean reef squid are, like, thick. They look they look like cuttlefish a little bit. It was pretty small. I'm not, I'm not arguing because I don't know. <laughs> It looked like cuttlefish to me, but that didn't mean damn thing. So, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our thing. We're snorkeling. And then Jen's not a real big water person. You know that. We've talked about that. And uh, so we're up on the surface. And I'm like, hey, let's just chill out for a second. Slow your breathing down. Let's relax. She goes, okay, I can do that. And then here comes a needle nose. Needlefish. Do, 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 do. I'm like, oh, cool. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And I, I kid you not, 20, 30 seconds later, and it was only two of them, um, but um, 
Dang it, I just forgot him. Um, not Pompano. Barracuda? Huh? Barracuda? No, no, no. Pompano, uh, but bigger. Oh. Um, Permits? Or... Permits. Yes. <laughs> Two big permit. And I, when I say... When I say big, I'm talking 15 to 20 pounds big. Two of them. <laughs> but we're just sitting there, and they're just slowly swimming by. <laughs> and I told them about it at the end, and she goes, really? She goes, I've been down here diving for 10 or 12 years. And she goes, I've seen small schools, a small permit, and mm -hmm. smaller pompano. She goes, but I've never seen one that big, <laughs> ever. I'm like, well, that's what happens when you just chill out and relax and let things go by. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like the school of uh, Blue Jack that we saw at the private island. That just chill cool. out and you never know what's going to come by. Yeah. So we saw that. And I'm, I'm done. I've had a great trip. My buddy Rick's like, JT, come on, come on. And he's like, there's a bunch of redfish here. I'm like, Rick, there's not a lot of redfish out there it's not a common color squirrel goes, no, or serious. that big rock and there's squirrel fish <laughs> everywhere you know you you can't miss a squirrel fish they're big eyes oh, yeah. and i know they migrate from the deeper to the shallow waters but i just didn't i was caught off guard by it and then um urchins mm -hmm. long oh, long spines that's good that's fine not something i see a lot yeah um and Jen's like, man, it's not, it's not, everything's kind of brown. And there was a lot of encrusting corals. Okay, right? yeah, like fire corals it, and stuff. It's not a real reefy area. It's not a lot of ripe, uh-oh, more wine, more vino, more vino. No, you're telling me? Yes, you more? I told you. HT, you and I right here. Where's it at, the freezer? <laughs> Fridge. Fridge? Rebecca says catfish, dogfish, squirrel fish. <laughs> They're beautiful fish. They really because red's not a real common um color in fish. It's not yeah. blues and greens, and you know, those are more yellows, those are more common. Um, but yeah, the fact that he saw that, and I, you know, Jen and I swam over there, it was just that whole excursion was just it was amazing. And to be able to get people who are not water people into it, that was even, yeah, that was even more special. Um, How did Jen enjoy all the water stuff? Is Got that a bottle for you and a bottle for me? Oh, hey, now. Um, so that you, I'm glad you asked because, you know, we, we have a close friendship with you guys. And, and you know, Jen, and after that excursion, Jen just straight up told me, I can do stuff like this now. And I was like, oh, oh damn. That's kind of so why I wanted week, to know. <laughs> as soon as she said that, in the back of my head, I didn't want to say it, Matt and Kimbra, Matt and Kimbra. That's exactly what I thought. I don't know about the scuba stuff, but that does open but up a lot more getting stuff. getting in the water. Yeah. Huh? Snorkeling and getting in the water in general. <clears throat> Maybe the four of us can do sea trek at the aquarium. Yeah. Oh, I know she would do that. I know she would. It just took, and, and her and I have snorkeled before. We snorkeled in Hawaii, and that was an amazing adventure. That was where I got molested by the sea turtles. <laughs> um, and that was an experience that I've never had before. You'd like that hey. style of hat. Stacy's complimenting. It's the new one. This is the, this is the, uh, this is the Kraken, and I even got the, I even got the hat pin that came with it. So, or it didn't come with it. I had to buy it. Yeah, it takes a special person to take to be able to pull off that kind of hat. <laughs> yeah, bald person. Oh, Marty, don't fall no, 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 by no, that no. person. No, sorry. Well, not that Especially one. That's a little that big. Size. That's a little big for you. <laughs> no, you're a you're a baseball hat kind of. No, I can't. Hats are too big for me. We did see a hat. I should have got that. I should have went back and got that hat. There was a hat at the Renaissance Festival that like oh, was yeah, perfect. Cute. The style of that hat worked for me. I can see you in a actually maybe in a 
baseball hat, but like a trucker hat. I can see that. Mm, I don't know about <laughs> that. You must not know me real well. Oh, I know you give you a couple glasses of wine. You pull that trucker hat <laughs> off real well. well. What would you call that style of hat? I don't know. It's it was a very unique hat. So JT, um the scooters, I have questions because I, I'm familiar with Sea Trek, but there's I know why they keep you to eight feet, because there's like there's safety concerns. If they let you go deeper than that, you'd start getting yes. into some embolisms well, and stuff like that. Before but, you ask, before you ask, there's a couple reasons why. And my hat's crooked. What the hell? Um safety, yes, right? Of always safety, insurance, right? Yeah. So what they did is they were very safety conscious. And I wouldn't say over because there's you don't know what the the ability of some people are as far as swimming. Right. Hey, yeah. I'm kind of buoyant. You pull me out of that thing, I'm gonna kind of go to the top, right? Then you got Jen, she's not, and there was a few of those people, so they put that buoy on there. And the funny thing is, I watched it after my group, watching the second and third group. They got these people on this little scooter. This ain't the right thing, right? Because it doesn't do like a motorcycle. It's a button. Hmm. You see these balls floating everywhere. <laughs> and that's for safety for the depth and yeah. safety because you can see everybody. It didn't – you, it would have bothered just because of your ability. Um, but for somebody like myself who I know I can swim – I'm not Aquaman like you, but I know I can swim. Mm -hmm. But I also have that as a fallback too, if for whatever reason, because I'm in a new device. Um, it's loud. Yeah, I need to clear clear my ears, my ears, no, new a few times, so it gives me that safety. Um, you know that that ability to understand. If something happens, I can cling on to that, right? Right. And they right. can see me. Now, this wreck was about 55 feet of water. Mm -hmm. So they probably don't want their people to take the scooter. I would say they said they were expensive. We were, I was talking to the captain. Um, sure. Yeah, you know, I, I could imagine one of those things being 10 to 15 or not, if not more, $1,000. So they probably don't want Joe Schmo taking this thing 55 feet of water. Well, you if you go below, if you go much below that, and, and with that kind of speed, and you're not trained on like the stuff you need to know for scuba, and exactly you, you could hurt yourself real easily. At, at eight feet, you're fine. You're not going to do anything at eight right, feet. Right, right. And and they're not 20, 30 feet. You're you're starting to push the boundaries and something like that. And you go below. They're not feet. drawing on Matt and Kimbra, the people who are certified. Right. And right. Do this all the time. We would we would just scuba. Yeah. Right. Right. They're drawing on people who have never done anything like this in their mm -hmm. life, which was ninety eight percent of my group, mm -hmm. and hoping that they enjoy themselves because look some people are just never happy no matter what they do that's just life right mm -hmm. but i i took seven people and everybody loved it everybody had a great time it didn't matter if you got to ride these little scooters or if you got to snorkel you had a great time yeah, and I, th I think the whole sea trek system is good because it does exactly what you're talking about it gives People that would not otherwise, you don't have to go right. through training, you don't have, to have any special skill sets, but it gets you underwater. And honestly, mm -hmm. like if you can do a Sea Trek type experience and you're like, that was fun, um, scuba is easier. You What's know? next, right? Yeah. What's next with the water? It was like much, it's much quieter. And it's different <laughs> than just snorkeling because you're actually in yeah. their environment. You're, you're, you're under the water. It. Yeah. yeah, you can just breathe casually. You don't have to worry about like if people that are new to snorkeling have to worry about mm -hmm. water getting in their snorkel and all that. Like you don't have to worry. It eliminates all that. It's just a real good underwater, truly underwater experience. And it's a great like intro. Maybe you want to stop there or 
they're like, wow, this was amazing. Maybe you want to go further, but it's, it's a good, it's a great way to do what you're talking about, just to give people that experience that may, maybe wouldn't have that otherwise. So, and you know what, when, when we were in Cozumel on, and bless you twice, um, when we were in Cozumel, that was the first time I had snorkeled in dang a long, long time. Right. We went out and bought me some, some, mm -hmm. a new, a new mask and a snorkel and fins. And I got no, and the water wasn't cold by any means. No, the clarity, the water clarity wasn't great. We saw fish, but I had forgotten about, wow, slow down, control your breathing, S slow your heart rate down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, you're going to see a lot more. And if you're doing that with scuba, how fast are you going to go through, through your tanks? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, you don't want to. It. It's yeah. It's definitely about, even though it technically burns a lot of calories, but it, it's definitely something that you're going to have a better experience if you're relaxed and just take your time. Um, and, and that's, that's why I told Jen, we're here on the surface. We're controlling our breathing. Just chill mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Who knows what we're going to see? Find your Zen moment. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and she gets it. She's not, yeah. Hey, that's an idea. That's an idea, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Come down. Next February. We'll put all of Come us in the water. We can, well, you know what? I know people. We can figure it out. You should know people, damn it. Um, well, they normally only do it four at a time, but I know oh. people. Oh, you think you could pull those kind of strings? I know Tim. <laughs> I think I think Tim will work with me. I wish they'd let us just die. I know. Anita says, I need a crown. You need a tiara. I need a tiara. Hey, I've got one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, Rebecca says, breathing underwater is my biggest concern as a land lover. You know what, Rebecca? I think you, you would absolutely it. love that. Rebecca diving. would do it. Rebecca was like, Rebecca was snorkeling in Aruba like a pro. I know. She was like diving down and stuff. Yeah. She had that full face mask and she's like, this just isn't working. And I'm like, use the real thing. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's like perfect. And you know what? Talking about that, that was one of the things I had a couple people in my group of the seven that had some anxiety about that exact same thing because they have you first, you know, some of them never even jumped in the ocean in any sense, right? But we were in a protected cove and they have you swim up to the scooter and they call it the bell, the top of it, right? And they explain to you when you when you swim up to it. Hold on to the back of the bell to get in the scooter. You have to go underneath, hold your breath, put your head, which is difficult for some people because you, you're going to close your eyes. It's salt water. It's going to burn your eyes. You go in head first and then scoot your butt in, right? And including Jennifer, because Jennifer did it and she struggled because it caught her um, bun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was two people that it did the same thing. But once they got in and they can hear the blah, 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 and the oxygen, the air, oh, okay, I'm sitting down. I'm pretty chilled out. I'm pretty relaxed. Yeah. And they didn't have to focus on what you and I are talking about, controlling your breathing, controlling your heart rate, slowing down and chilling out. So somebody who says, you know, breathing underwater, this might be the perfect opportunity to, to begin – um, their underwater or their water experiences. And I, I we're going to, re so we got back. I don't know if it was at the terminal, at the airport or on the plane. Jen's caught a cold. That's why she's not with me tonight. Um, but we're probably going to record the podcast tomorrow. And I'm going to speak even more highly about uh, this excursion because I just feel that, um, I feel that they, not only did they provide, you know, some new experiences, I just really felt they went above what what we paid for. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. I want to, I want to, my podcast is tiny, but I, I want to put it out there as much as I possibly can for them. And, and that was in St. Thomas? Business, that was in St. Thomas. And did you, did that go out from the aquarium or did it go someplace else? No. So what we did is I had never been to this dock in St. Thomas. And honestly, I can't tell you where it was at because we've only been to St. Thomas on Carnival and Royal in when mostly Royal, a couple 
two or three times on the Royal. When we got there, it just didn't look the same. The area didn't look right, but they're doing some construction. So maybe that kind of threw me off too. Hmm. Um, so we got off the ship and just like any, any uh, excursion you book through the cruise line, you have to go to your zone or to the area where the excursion is. And they had us line up on the fence on the left-hand side. And then they probably had us walk 75-ish yards around the dock onto a smaller dock. And we walked onto this catamaran. No, no. Actually, this one wasn't our catamaran. catamaran. It looked like an old, it looked like a, a fishing boat that I would take from when I fished back home in Southern California. Um, but the captain said it had come from New Jersey and it was an old fishing boat. So, yeah. Single hold. I know what you're trying to do. Sorry, Kimber's trying to do something and it's it. not working. And I'm <laughs> trying to help her. I saw a strobe light there for a second. What are you guys up to? He's trying, I think she's trying to share a picture of you guys doing the scooters. Oh, and, oh uh, God. Yeah. There we go. There you go. There we go. It, it was the best for me, for me personally, it, it wasn't all that, but you know, cause I've done stuff, you know, let, 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 let's be real. I've jumped out of airplanes. I've done high altitude jumps out of airplanes. I've repelled from helicopters. I've done a lot of stuff. But me trying to make a group of people happy who have never done this, anything like this before, I I gain, I enjoyed myself. There's the cat again, my little uh, mountain lion over here. Um, I enjoyed myself so much, more than I ever thought I could, just because I saw people um, yeah. who have never experienced that before enjoy themselves. No, and, I get it. I mean, I love I love snorkeling with people and that or even if they're not snorkeling, I love like finding like a starfish or a sea urchin and bringing it up and showing them, and especially if I see like like a kid with their parents or something. Yes. We're at like like a port and snorkeling and they're just yeah. like the kids looking around and I bring them like a starfish they can hold. They're like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." I remember my first brittle star. Yeah. My only brittle star. <laughs> and, and honestly, I, I know this sounds dumb-ish, but I'm sitting there doing this, and I, I will be honest, I thought about you, Matt. I'm like, okay, this is probably how Matt feels. On a, on yeah. a larger scale, especially for children. Especially, I teach, yeah. Right? But I'm like opening up – I'm not a diver to the extent that you are, but I'm like, okay, I've always been a water guy. So I'm opening that part up to people that have never done it. Right. You know, and uh, we had a great time. The experience I shared with these other individuals. Yeah. I, I couldn't speak highly enough of the tour and, and just the experience. It was great. That's awesome. All right. We've got That's some awesome. comments to go through here. Also, uh, Paul's here. Hello, Paul. I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't want to leave the man because waiting. Because so is your mom. Oh, hey, mom. But that's fine. We'll just skip everyone else <laughs> to say hi. Paul and my mom are worth skipping I people for. I mean, there's. I mean, no, there's nobody right. else new. Tata, so. Patty, Patty cannot swim, and she did sea trek and loved it. But I had to hold her hand, and she squeezed so hard it went numb. Worth it. Yeah. No, because I, I want to let. And we have and we off the ladder. Pry her off the ladder. <laughs> no. There's a difference between the sea trek and because we're talked about a little bit and right. this. Yeah. This is a scooter. You so you're sitting on it and you control it. There's a green button to go. So you're controlling the speed. If you want to stop, you let go. You can only go eight feet deep. So you are pretty much totally in control of it. But but and with you know, with what he was saying, fear and, and not being in control, that's a real thing. I understand it completely. But this might be another opportunity to bring her into our underwater world. Don't know. Um, and then Rebecca says, I need to work out. I feel like I'm not the fittest to scuba right now. Um, Believe me, you, Rebecca, you don't have to be super fit to, to scuba. You have to know how to breathe. <laughs> 
I've seen some very, very out of shape <laughs> scuba divers. You may go through an air tank faster, but that's all right. He said, I still have my test that made it in one piece. <laughs> did we get that in Aruba? Where did we get your test from? Aw, look at that. Aw. How many days? Oh, Wait. yeah. So, so next week on Friday, we will have my mom here with us doing it live. We'll have to we'll have to squeeze her in here. So and then and she'll be here. But she's she coming needs. in. Yeah, she's coming in Wednesday, and then she's going to be here through the next what? She leaves Monday morning. Monday morning. The yeah. So. Yep. So like a week, week and a half, mm -hmm. pretty much. She'll be here. Nice. And we're and JT. I, I know we're like live, but. We're going to go to Wasabi. Her mom's going to be here for a little bit of that time. We're going to go to Wasabi, the teppanyaki place. And uh, we were going to see if you guys were available that night to go as well. Um, I think it's got to be, because her mom's only here three nights. And I think it's got to be... Whoa. The 23rd, Tuesday the 23rd. So I don't know if you're, I don't know what your availability is, but if you guys are available, you are more than welcome to join us for that. I will have to see the schedule, the new schedule. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think we're going to be available that night. But okay. let let's wait and see because things yeah. could have could change yeah. with with a new job coming up. Um, that's I'm supposed sorry, to be there. work on the twenty third. I'm going to be going to Wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good. That's probably not a good way to start. No, uh, I think that's what you should tell you. Oh, job. yeah, okay, yeah. No, yeah, no I, I know that's true. So. That's probably not yeah. a good idea. Hey, I, I'm going to Wasabi with my people. Uh, take it or leave it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm not sorry. too worried about it either because, you know, Matt and I have talked about it the last day or so. And I'm, <laughs> hey, I've got the license. If you want me, you want me. If you don't, oh, well. <laughs> but, you know, Wasabi's up there on my list of things that I need to take care of. <laughs> I do have priorities, buddy. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I would, you know, we'll we'll be there if we can. Um, yep. If you just said the twenty second, I'd be like, we're there. But I mean, I we could potentially do that. That yeah. would probably. Tonight my mom comes in, so we could pick her up and then. Oh go. yeah, possibly we that could, might work. We could possibly do that night too. Let us know when you know what your schedule is, and we can see what we can do. And even if we can't do wasabi. Um, Maybe we can get together or something while, while my mom, is, at least, is here or something. So the twenty second would probably be the better date, just because of the new scheduling. Because I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be on my yeah. two days off, but we can talk about that. Yeah, we can figure that. We can figure that out. Yeah. 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 We could probably do that. Yep. Yeah, and Anita's asking about my mom's hand. I know she. I talked to her today, and she said that it is. Uh, a little bit better than it had been. Um, it's still red and stuff. Oh, she got stung. Whoa. She got stung by a, a wasp on oh, her crap. hand, and it like swelled. My mom swells up though. If you just look at her weird, but uh, it swelled up real bad, and like she couldn't even bend her finger and stuff. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm disappointed. You didn't tell me that. I know I've been on a cruise, but you didn't posted it on Facebook. Yeah, I just I just found out about it what yesterday. I yeah, think, I think yesterday she uh, she told me about it. So. You know, if you were friends with her on Facebook, you'd know. <laughs> I thought I was, but I might not be. Might, I don't know. I'm be. just messing with. You. Um, I I don't know honestly. I thought I was, but <laughs> well, she I think she posted it. She posted on Facebook. Yeah, just in her. Oh, she didn't post it in Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it seems to be getting better. So hopefully, hopefully it'll continue. If not, she's going to go to the doctor. But mm -hmm. she was already she already had a nurse practitioner look at it. They and they at, go at least she didn't get stung by a Bonaire Hornet in the face. Yes, that's true, Stacy. You would know about that. I, <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, from that, like yeah. my face would have been like a giant swollen mess. Yeah. So I'm glad it was that doing was it. a very interesting and or unique experience. That was that was a great excursion. That was absolutely amazing. It was also a very bizarre excursion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just and and the guide who was amazing. That was why it was like 
Yeah. <laughs> that could have, there were many times during that excursion it could have went either way. And he uh but he carried yeah. it through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan. He he uh very oh, unique it. individual, and I yeah. did enjoy that excursion for sure. Yeah. He enjoyed it, I think, as much as we did. Yeah. Probably more. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> He might have. I think he would have just hung out with us if we Not were there. Not sure. He even there. works for that company. Yeah. He's just, yeah. You're just, you're just a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come with me. Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do like the Danish accent, but it was. Yeah. That's that funny. Hilarious. Um. But so yeah, we were in Puerto Rico because you got there. Hold on. I'm sorry. Oh. I have to interrupt. JT, what ship were you on? Huh. So. We were on the Norwegian Viva. Viva. You know, now that we're, you know, what, an hour? Yeah, I guess I, I knew that, but I didn't think about, like, other Nobody people. Nobody else knew that. Yes. Stacy knew, because Stacy and I talked. Yes. Oh, yes. Stacy doesn't, doesn't count. Wow. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> wow. Give her some wow. more wine. <laughs> um, I, I still have lots left. Uh, oh, wow. Holy shnikes. Okay. Um. So, not cold though. I'm gonna. Is Marty yeah. sleeping? I think Marty's done. He's not sleeping, but you could put him back. I'm gonna put Marty back yeah. and put my wine in the fridge. So you were in Puerto Rico uh, a little bit, like a day before the cruise. Yeah. So this was for me and Jennifer. Uh oh. See you, Marty, or Marday, whatever you are. <laughs> he says night night. Peace, Marty. Um. <clears throat> so this was for us very unique because. We've never flown to the terminal to the to a cruise, and uh, so this was our first time flying to a cruise, and it just so happened to be San Juan, Puerto Rico. And so what I did, and I did this for some people in our group. Um, everybody in my group, uh, we booked the air airfare through the group, right through the cruise line. Right. Um, and if you booked your, your airfare through the cruise line, but you book your hotel separately, we book your transportation through the cruise line because it just made sense. Get off the ship. They're like, hey, here's our bus. Go to the airport. It just made sense. Was it a little bit more expensive? Maybe. But you guys are like me in the sense I want as less stress as possible. Right. Paying for peace of mind. And you did. Yeah. Hey, Larry. Right. I saw Larry. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes well, sense. So what we did was for us, like I said, we had 18 total rooms. One, two, three of us to include us booked airfare Trent all around transportation and hotel through the cruise line. Now, where that was the downfall, I got some a couple experiences. By the way, Becca man, Kimber found Aruba. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Yeah, <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like blackmail to me. You know what, Larry? I was going to say something nice to you, but maybe I won't now. Maybe you better. Larry, there's got to be an FTP site out there that you can use. Um, I would also like you to include us at cdazed at yahoo.com for that. <laughs> um, there might be some blackmail in there somewhere. Um, but anyways, <laughs> that was a side note. Um, so like for us, we booked hotel, all transportation, airfare, hotel, and all transportation. Um, hotel was probably a little bit more money than if you booked it on your own, but think about this. You book airfare, hotel, all transportation, that's in your cruise fare. Right. You pay for it by final payment date. Or you manage that on your own. You're looking for the best prices. It might be two months, six months out. Mm -hmm. And then you have to pay for it all in one lump sum. So for us and for a few of my customers, 
it just made more sense paying for that within your cruise fare. And I will tell you this for there was three of us that did that and it worked out for all of us quite well. Um, for Jen and I, it was probably a little bit nicer. And I think that what they did was they took were the group leaders. So I think they right. took just a little bit extra better care of us. And we flew into San Juan and we got there. So, like our flight left Orlando at like 5.01. So AM or PM? Huh? AM or PM? Hey, okay, cat, don't bite me. <laughs> Ow, that hurt a little bit. Sorry. Um, we had a, we our flight left at 5.01 a.m. out of. Oh, wow. Okay. So, of course, we have never flown out of Orlando. So we want to make sure we're there in time, plus long-term parking. So we got there at like 2.30 in the morning, which I know most people, for me, it doesn't bug me. Jen, it bothered her, but it is what it is, right? So we flew in, got into San Juan. We were at our hotel. Oh, wait, take a step back. So we get into San Juan. And there's this little old lady holding this Norwegian Cruise Line sign. <laughs> the only thing that would have been better if it said JT Milstead, but it said Norwegian. And she's like, Mr. Milstead, your your luggage will be on category or on uh, uh damn it, I can't think of it. The no, carousel no. four. Okay. Go get your luggage and come back. Yes, ma'am. So we walk over there, get our luggage, come back. And she's like, your driver's Jose. Have a great time. Okay. So we follow Jose. Yes, I walk like that. We follow Jose. And we walk up to a brand new Cadillac Escalade. Hmm. Like We're living the good life here, right? <laughs> so... Come to find out, everybody in my group that booked that transportation, they all had vans, but they were by themselves. So it wasn't the Escalade, but they were all by themselves because they come in at different times. It fluctuates, right? right? So actually, I think we were by ourselves in the Escalade. My buddy Rick was by himself in a van. And another one of my customers were with one other couple. So, I mean, that's not bad at all, right? That, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got to the hotel at 8.40 in the morning. I'm thinking they're going to take our luggage. Hold on. What are you doing? They're going to take our, they'll take our luggage and we'll have to go walk around, right? Because it's too early. Check-in's at four. Hmm. Well, so we're driving to the airport. From the airport, um, and Norwegian, the Viva does not dock in Old San Juan. Right. So if you're embarking in San Juan, you're not in old San Juan. You're on the other side of the bay. And I think they call it uh, – it's, it's been a week ago, so I've already forgot it. Uh, dang it. It's like the American terminal or something like that, right? It's a different, it's a different terminal. So we get there. It's like a 25 to 30-minute drive to where we were at. And so the driver says, you guys are here at a bad time. I'm like, oh, crap. What's I have to up? interrupt you because Larry's getting off here. Larry says, I plan on using Google Drive. I just need email. Fantastic cruising at gmail.com. For the footage. For his footage. His, his Aruba, Aruba footage. footage. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was lost. Aruba, um, meaning uh, me and Rebecca having a great time. Oh, was there any rum involved? Um. Of course. There was a oh, lot of rum involved. There was a lot of rum involved. Damn, I missed it. Um, so <laughs> anyways, so we're leaving the airport. He's taking us and he goes, You guys are here at the worst time, the busiest weekend in this area of the year. I'm like, that doesn't <laughs> sound good. Only <laughs> all the rum. <laughs> that works That's for a me. Good time. Oh, I'm jealous. Um, and I'm like, well, why is that? He goes, this is the 
Puerto Rican Comic Con. Huh. Oh. oh, nice. It ended up being great. But our hotel, we stayed at the Sheraton San Juan Casino, something like that, which is essentially right across the street. See, see, yes, please, please. See dazed at yahoo.com. <laughs> so <laughs> our Rebecca, hotel what's your, was what's your Gmail? I know you probably can't type it all in, but do it like randomly so if you can get it together. Oh yeah. What 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 I miss? Here, here, I'm gonna see. <laughs> I don't know if you will be able to type that in. We're going to yeah, it should should in YouTube. I went YouTube. That's oh, where I was koala yeah. at Gmail. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Larry for Rebecca, it's Koba the Koala at gmail.com. So um he said our your hotel's right across the street from the convention center. So it's it's busy. I'm like, okay. So we get there at 8 30, 8 45, something like that. And I said, look, I, I know you guys are probably busy. Can we check our luggage in? Can we check in the hotel? And she's like, oh, yeah, your room's ready. I'm like, what? Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> so we went and had breakfast in the hotel, which was amazing. Oh, and then so Jen slept for two to three hours off and on. And then we got up, had a beverage, and then just watched all. And I'm going to – I, Kayla, my daughter, corrected me on this. But I'll say this. We just sat there. We're people. We like to watch people. So we watched all the Comic-Con people. I know there's a word for it. I just can't think of it right now. Nerds? Um, no, 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 no. Uh, what is Cosplay? Cause people. The cosplay Cos people. Yeah. yeah. But it, that, that... Nerds with money was, and creativity. <laughs> it, just was great. it was a great day. Um, I had another customer in the hotel, but they were doing stuff on the island, so we never saw them again. Uh, but... You know, for my experience, there were some flight issues because when you do the flights through the cruise line, you are kind of at their whim a little bit. But when we flew from Orlando to San Juan, we flew JetBlue, which um, – because I normally fly Southwest and we don't have to worry about luggage fees. And they did charge us for luggage, for, for check-in luggage, but it was only $30 a piece. Like American, I think, does 50. So it wasn't that bad. Um, our return flight, they did kind of, how do I, it was screwed up a little bit because our flight was, we got into, you know, we all know we get in about 6.30 in the morning when the ship gets in and they want you off by 8.30-ish. You know, what am I going to do? My flight was supposed to leave San Juan at 8 o'clock at night. Hmm. So I, I called Southwest. So it was after final payment date, but I called Southwest. I said, look, I, I really don't want to wait there till 8 o'clock at night. Can you help us out? I don't care. You know, I, I go, look, I got a limit on money, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. What can we do? So they changed our flight. Instead of it being 8 something, it was 2 something. And they charged me 40 bucks, $42. That's, that's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a win for me. So yeah. we took it. Now, they offered me an, a flight that was an hour and a half earlier for $100, and I didn't want to spend the 100 bucks. Now, for everybody that's on here, in case you come up on this in your travels, so when we got to the airport returning home, we tried it again, and that same flight, they wanted to charge us $204 for both of us. So... If you have an opportunity to do that, take the hundred dollars for both of you, because they're going to try to get you for two hundred and four dollars at the end. But right. we were happy because we got home before midnight, one o'clock in the morning. So cool, it wasn't that bad. I'll I'll, I'll pay the forty bucks. That's right. easy. People. Because did you do anything in San Juan like while you were there the day before? Did you have a chance to like? Did you just hang out at the hotel and chill, or did you like go out and do stuff, or what? Yeah, so we've been to San Juan numerous times, mm -hmm. um, 
and because our flight was so early out of Orlando, we just kind of chilled, had some food, had some beverages, watched the people. Mofongo. No mofongo this time. Because remember, um, if you embark out of San Juan, it's away from town. Hmm. You don't get that old San Juan authenticity. Somebody in, somebody in Puerto Rico makes mofongo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, for sure. Because there was I've a never lot had mofongo, no. and no. I really want to try it. And I'm I don't sorry. Know if you like it or not. You might Isn't like it. Isn't it like rice with pork and stuff? It's not yeah. rice. Oh no. man, I want some pork fried rice. <laughs> not yet. I'm Doesn't apparently like, hungry. It's more meaty than than that. But. I know. Daniel made it one time for a birthday thing, and it's, I didn't because I was afraid of it. So real. Let's be real. What is it? It's plantains. Oh, I love plantains. In a press with whatever topping you want. Yeah, it's because there's usually meat. Usually meat on it, but. So fun God has been me. It it's okay. It's, it's like, not bad. So being that I'm a Mexican food snob, it reminds me of like a tamale, but it's not the same because it's not masa. So the, the flavor profile is a little different. Mm -hmm. But I've had it a few times and it's just it, it's not bad. But it's not like, oh God, I gotta have it. But that's not what I grew up eating. Yeah, we went to an old, old San Juan restaurant, and uh, I got mufongo for the first time. And it was like, I was kind of like you. I was like, this is pretty good. But my mom was with us, and she got like a skirt steak or something. And that thing was like out of this world. It was so good. And we were all like, oh, man, <laughs> we should have got that. that. I don't know why would make us mufongo. Oh, yeah, Viviana would probably make it for us. I want to read it. What, what, what? Her, her friend Viviana, I guess, I guess she's my friend, too. Um, that lives in Tampa, and she's Puerto Rican. And uh, uh, she used to live with her and her husband, Matt, uh, before, at one point. Let's but, go. Um, she's, Let's she go. can cook, is what I've heard. So, she makes the you... best Mexican yellow rice. I love Viviana's rice. I swear to God, I thought you were about to say mac and cheese. I was going to call you on that. But... <laughs> no. Viviana's Puerto Rican, so she's oh, like... Oh, hold on for a second. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Puerto Rican mac and cheese? No, hold on, hold on. Okay. So I told you I went snorkeling my buddy Rick, right, on this catamaran. Did you find mac and cheese in the ocean? Hold on. Sorry, so, I'm almost two glasses in. <laughs> and it's mac and cheese. I know, we have a special place for mac and cheese. Um, So we're on this catamaran having a good time. And the captain goes, all right, everybody, rum after snorkel, safety first. I'm like, yeah, I'm about that. He goes, while you guys are snorkeling, I'm going to be up on the boat cooking this great, tasty meal. I'm looking, I'm like, man, you're so full of crap. But anyways, um, it actually was delicious. Maybe I was just really <laughs> hungry. But one of the dishes was... It was spaghetti, mac and cheese. Hmm. Those I, are two different things. I, I get it. But it had like really, really cooked cheese and mac cheese in it. It was actually really good. So I'm going to try it in the near future. And I'm going to like get good at it and I'm going to bring it over to you guys. Yes. But it was... Real, the food on that catamaran, it was jerk chicken, mm -hmm. dirty rice, mm -hmm. sp spaghetti mac and cheese, and yams, which I don't do vegetables. We know that. But um, they're not green. Eh, it's just not my thing. But anyways, it's everything else is really good. odd hearing you scold somebody for not eating vegetables. <laughs> I eat but she vegetables. knows. <laughs> She's heard me say it a million times. It ain't. If it's green, I eat it. I eat vegetables. Do you? Yeah. Like what? More asparagus. than me. Oh, that's true. She does eat asparagus. Broccoli? Yeah. yeah. Broccoli. Okay. yeah. Carrots? Lettuce? Lettuce? In, in certain salads. <laughs> I don't eat tomatoes. No, tomatoes what? are no. Tomatoes what? Absolutely not. Why? Disgusting. They're not a vegetable. Well, I still don't like them. Didn't like them. 
I don't like anything about them. <laughs> I don't like them in full form. I don't like them big. I don't like them little. And I don't like them mashed. See, I could take it like a steak tomato, pour some salt on it. Oh, my God. Well, you enjoy that. I'll eat my broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> You like broccoli soup, don't you? Like, what is that? Cheese and broccoli? Better broccoli? Oh, yeah. If it's got enough cheese in it. <laughs> Rebecca said, if only our snuggle trip, ha trip had lunch, too. Ooh, yeah, that would have been great. Uh, Rebecca, I did a similar snorkel trip to what we did, and it ended with a barbecue lunch. It's just the one we did didn't. No, the one that we did in Nassau, mm -hmm. that one had a really pathetic meal. That's the or, one that had the ceviche and the... Or was that in Cozumel? Oh, that might have been in Cozumel. Cozumel, that was horrible. What did we do? We've only been in Nassau together once. Maybe that I must have been the one I was with you guys. We went to yeah. Because the one in, in, in Cozumel that we did, the buffet sucked. Oh, well, that was no, horrible. No, that we was, that we, did, that a, we did a boat but, trip that had a meal. And it was bad. It was limited. It was worse. It was worse. Chunkanop usually has a good buffet. But yeah, when we went, it was horrible. But yeah, so tomato sandwich, Stacy. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> oh, oh. So talk about that. So we're on this same snorkel trip, right? And we're we're going out. It was an hour, and, about an hour twenty ish minute ride to a to a snorkel spot. And you're like, oh, we got snacks. I'm like, oh, cool. What's the snack? Sandwiches. Oh, okay. What's the sandwiches? Tuna or cheese? <laughs> I could do a cheese sandwich, I guess. <laughs> I tried the tuna. <laughs> and then I tried the cheese. Even I guess I was uber hungry because they were both pretty good. <laughs> so hey, Michael, Michael Ann's here. I saw that. She says, I don't like raw tomatoes, but I don't mind tomato sauces or cooked in casseroles. But you like spaghetti. Yeah, Shilly, she but does with it. very little sauce yeah. or yeah, with like, like a, a buttery garlicky sauce. Like on her pizza, her. she prefers to have limited sauce on her pizza. Like light to a different type of sauce. Yeah. I'm not I'm not big on That's not pizza. Food. Huh? That's not pizza. It is pizza. Yeah, I, I like extra sauce on mm -hmm. my pizza. Uh yeah. so, Viviana said she might be able to grab a recipe and make some for us. Oh, it's not in her back pocket, though. No, but makes. you know what? If we're playing D&D with Viviana, oh, yeah. she can come over and bring some bring, mofongo. Bring some mofongo, yeah. And her yeah, rice. But, and her but, rice. Okay, hold on, hold on. So it's not in her back pocket, but I bet she goes to, like, Abuela or her grandmother or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. She probably yeah. knows someone. Yeah. I mean, so it'll probably be... She moved to or Florida she, when she was like five or six. So yeah. she's lived in Florida, but she knows but she has family stuff, yeah. in Puerto Rico. She's got. So she's it got sounds like ways. Mafongo at Matt and Kimbra's <laughs> in the near future. Mm -hmm. Probably in the next couple months. We'll see. I'm there. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Mm -hmm. Uh Rebecca said that I slowly started adding tomatoes to salads and sandwiches, but I love ketchup and mom's homemade spaghetti sauce. I've been enjoying some habanero ketchup lately. Um, I went on a catamaran excursion in Cuba and they gave us tuna sandwiches for snack. Oh, see, that's funny. Whoa. That is funny. That because I've never like because I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm sure it's canned tuna, but I'd be like, Food poisoning? I mean, but it, was actually, it was actually really good. Again, maybe I was hungry, but it was really good. I had, a, I had four, I had four quarters, so I had a full sandwich. I don't know. Swimming stuff makes you. I mean, you burn some energy at doing that. Swimming I wasn't even in the water yet. Oh yeah, yeah. I wasn't even in the water yet. Oh. Well, that's just you. It was just thinking about it. It actually, when I get on a boat, I'm hungry. It's just something about the water being on the water. water. Yeah. yeah. It's like so going to a on that same a excursion. Sandwich, like a ham and cheese sandwich on the water is like great. Everything's better on the water. A My sandwich on the water. Definitely was canned tuna. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're headed back. We've had a great time. And the captain goes, oh, we have a surprise for you. 
And I'm like, okay, what are we doing? He makes a quick left turn and pulls into the beach. And there's people <laughs> everywhere. And I see a sign. It was Sandals, Sandals Resort. Huh. Oh. He goes, everybody, we got 10 or 15 minutes. Go just chill out in the water. Here's a, you know, they were throwing beers. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't drink beer. Rum punch? Handed me a rum punch. And just chill out in the warm water in the, Car in the Caribbean. Nice. That's great. awesome. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, San Juan, all of our, our, all of our stuff was purchased to the cruise line. And uh, I, I think we probably could have saved somewhere two to three hundred dollars to book it ourselves. That that's substantial money, but that's two or three hundred for two. Um, but we had the peace of mind that it was through the cruise line, and if something happened, they would have taken care of it. Now, I know the last couple of weeks. We'll say Africa just happened the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about it, but there was a group of people doing a cruise in Africa. They booked an excursion outside of the cruise line. It did not make it back in time. So they were SOL, as they say, right? So they tried to make it to the next port to meet up with the cruise line. The, the ship couldn't get into, dock, into port oh. because the tides had swung too much. So they ended up two or three days that they had to pay out of their pocket to make it to meet the, the cruise line. The oh, ship. that sucks. <laughs> well, they yeah, took it upon that's... themselves in a foreign country mm -hmm. to book outside the cruise line. Yeah. Now, now. If you're in Hawaii, if you're in San Juan, you're that's much more flexible, right? You're in a US right. territory, a US state. Right. But if you're in Africa and you're an American citizen, I'm sorry. I why the hell would you try to book that on your own? You've never been there before. Yeah, you're you're rolling you're rolling that dice a little bit. And rolling they that. lost. Yeah. So so San yeah. Juan. You know, that's a, a U.S. territory. There's a lot more flexibility. Um, the embarkation process on the ship was, especially since we booked through the cruise line. Mm -hmm. So we, at the hotel, we loaded up on the bus. They took our luggage. The guide came on the bus. We're about a 10-minute drive from the port. We're going to pull you up to a special gate. Your luggage will get on the ship. You're not going to wait in line. Enjoy a vacation. Uh, since this cruise left out of Puerto Rico, would you say that the majority of passengers were, were they Americans? Were they Puerto Ricans? Were they, was it a mixed bag? Like what, what was the demographic there? I would say if you're Puerto Rican, you're American. Well, yeah, but you know, you know, what I mean, no, like, no, you're right, you're right. yeah. So I, I would say it was predominantly American, and when I say predominantly, I would say somewhere between seventy and eighty percent were just people like you and I, right? You know, they'll take one vacation a year, and they wanted to get the most bang for their buck. Because mm -hmm. I did talk to people. And that's kind of what I got. Um, I would say there was quite a bit of Puerto Rican um, people there too, because it's something different for them a little bit. But I, I would say 20 to 30% of, of the people were fluent in Spanish because – from Puerto Rico. <laughs> no, I wouldn't just say Puerto Rico, but I would okay. also, you know, fluent Spanish. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. they they come from the Caribbean. Because gotcha. there's a lot of people that go to Puerto Rico that yeah, just if you're in the Caribbean and out. you want to go on a cruise, you're gonna probably go to Puerto Rico. Yes, you know, because you get the most bang for your buck. Unless you're south. Unless you're south. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, Stacy says, and the mainstream media blamed the cruise line and said they abandoned the cruisers. So here's what I'm going to comment on this. I did not read any of the articles. I just read the headline and moved on. But my coworker said that the excursion company contacted the cruise line and let them know that they they were running late and the cruise line said that they were going to wait and then left. So I don't know that 100%, but yeah. that's what I heard. That's a lot of hearsay. I mean, and, I mean yeah, no, no, no. anything no, no. possible. She's, so I've done since this all happened while we were on our cruise. Mm -hmm. I, I have done some research on this. And you're both right to an extent. Um, anything that happens to cruisers, the mainstream media blows it way out of proportion. Of course. We know that as cruisers. But I did also find out that the cruise the 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 that excursion company did reach out to Norwegian but let's be real there and I don't know what the extent of late or tardiness was but that cruise line also has to plan for if they're in the port too long they have to pay a fee right. or mm -hmm. penalty yep if they're late to the next port, they have to pay a fee or penalty. So they have to balance it out. And we all are told, and that might be um, um, what uh, we're all either told or we all see it on the daily planner or we all see it on the app on our phone. All aboard time is three o'clock, 1500, something to that extent. They normally make announcements. Hey, be mindful of ship time. All aboard time is 3 p.m. Unfortunately, people are on vacation. They might not always pay attention to what's being said and what's being proposed and what's being put out there. I get it. I do understand. You're living your best life. But Can I if I'm in Africa, I'm really going to pay attention to what in the holy hell is going yeah. on. Yeah. Or yeah. Australia mm -hmm. or, or or anywhere. Yeah. That especially for that places easy to that, get from point A to point B. <laughs> I mean, look. If I'm cruising in the Caribbean, if I'm cruising in Mexico, whether it be the Caribbean side or the Pacific side, I've cruised enough. I'm comfortable. I got my watch. I got my phone. I'm, I'm very coherent of what's going on. I would think an African cruise for anybody that's an American citizen, because I think all those individuals were American citizens. I... I don't want to be left in another country. Stacy says they were an hour late. Did, were they? I, I haven't seen the story at all. Were they on a? Were they delayed because something happened, or were they just they got on an excursion? They weren't. They didn't pay attention to what time it got back. Or I, you know? I think it was longer than an hour. I think it was like an hour and twenty. Hmm. And I don't think it well, was. If, if all aboard time was say three, they probably left at 3.30 and then if they were an hour late from that, that would be about an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes. So yeah, that may right. be where that time frame comes from. Because usually so, all the boards like a half an hour before they actually leave. Before they you've got, take You've off. got a buffer of 30 minutes typically. Right, right. And normally if you're on a cruise, you know, for 15, 20 minutes, you'll hear an announcement Joe Schmo, please come to the service desk. Or Joe mm -hmm. Schmo, come to the courtesy desk. And they'll make that same announcement two or three times. Right. Well, Joe Schmo hasn't got on board yet. Or something, and technology does fail. Something happened. Right. Because I will say this I don't remember what port it was, but. All aboard time was at 3.30, was given an example. And I heard over the over the intercom, 
Joe Schmo. That's not a horrible say, but Joe Schmo, please come to the courtesy desk. Joe Schmo was sitting right next to me. Hmm. So stuff does happen. Yeah, hmm. sure. sure. But I will tell you this: Joe Schmo, Joe Schmo ran, ran, because we were on deck seventeen, and and the service desk was on deck six or seven. So stuff does happen. Yeah, but that's yeah. why they make that announcement over and over and over, right? Until hopefully they find Joe Schmo. In well, I know if, if you take an excursion on like a cruise line booked excursion, and something happens that is beyond the control of the of the excursion company, even if the ship leaves without you, the ship is going to pay to get you back to the ship or something. Mm -hmm. But if you go outside of the cruise line, right, then, right, right, right. Then, then you're, then, you know, you may be SOL. There are some excursions outside of the cruise line that claim that they will guarantee it. And maybe they will, but maybe they won't. Like, I, I don't know how sure I would be of that. So, yeah. So my, with my with our agency, with what you're saying, our agency, they, they sell excursions, right? Mm -hmm. well, actually, better example. What we did in ABC Islands, they guaranteed or on time arrival. Right. Now, with you guys in Cozumel and those excursions, I have Hi, personally. Karen. Huh? I just want to say somebody popped in. Hi, oh. Sharon. Oh. I have never personally booked an excursion outside the cruise line. Hmm. Ever. I, I have, but I have rules that I set for myself, and it's like it's got to right. be a port I'm familiar with. It's got to be a location that I know I I have multiple routes to get back to the ship, and it's right. not going to be like a last minute right. getting it's, back. It's got to be like guaranteed to finish a couple hours mm -hmm. before I'm supposed to be on the ship. We're like Cozumel, perfect example, right? But, right. I've been there numerous times. Yeah, I booked one excursion outside the cruise line that was with you guys. Mm -hmm. But I know I can get back to the ship. Like I know, even if my cab is in an accident, like they can get me another cab, I can get back to the ship. Right, like, jump out, know, and grab another cab. And, that's and, that's and my if, point. If all aboard I'm, is I'm comfortable clock, enough, I'm going to get back. I'm okay to do that. Yeah, I can take a cab to Mr. Sancho's and say. All aboard's in two and a half hours, you know, give or take. I can walk out and get a taxi cab and right. make make it back. Yeah. But if I'm going to Africa, I am not booking an excursion outside the cruise line. Right. Also, if I had to get a plane trip back from Cozumel to the United States, that's much more doable than from Africa to <laughs> wherever in Africa to the wherever else in Africa. You know, and that would be different for people that maybe are more familiar with that part of the world, but yeah. mm -hmm. I, I would be more. No, Michael angry. Ann says, we did a non-cruise excursion in Bonnie renting golf carts. We were back a couple yeah. hours before we needed to be. Yeah, yeah and be that's safe. great because yeah. you can completely control your own right. time. Right. There you and go. It, it's a golf that's cart for a go. You could get a hold of somebody and you're, it's not like. Right. It's not like you're stranded. But, but you're in control. So yeah. if you know what time you need to be back, you can make sure that you're back within that time yeah. when you do something but that, like that's that. That's different. That, But that's a valid point, but it is different than what we're talking about. Yeah. I got my golf cart. I'm in, and, and. That's up to man, you. We're gonna paint, right? More wine. I'm not going to refill. I have man, to go get more wine. No, I have to paint tonight. Paint? Not like walls, terrain for painting, painting, terrain. painting little better little terrain. fake rocks for Dungeons and Dragons. More wine, Matt. <laughs> I have to I'm be able to dry brush. I'm out of bourbon. Go get her more wine. <laughs> hey, she said so. What I might do is put some ginger ale in one of these jalapenos. Oh, that's that, a good idea. That Here you good. go. Uh, see a double edge. You can take take care of two things at one time. Um it doesn't have to be a full glass. God damn it, you're funny. <laughs> Matt, fill it up. All right. Uh, Mike Land says, we were never more than 40 minutes away from the ship and from many places we could actually see the ship. Otherwise, I no, wouldn't. No, no, that's perfect. 
right? Yeah, that, sure. that's, I, that's I would love to do something like that. And we actually, JT, when, when you guys and us and Stacy went to Bonaire, we looked at this, the golf carts, I think, right? And they were sold out, which yeah. is why we ended up booking that other excursion. I think so. But that was one of the best excursions we've ever done. A, B, Bon Air, C. that was with Stan. The which one? The Bon Air was with Stan. The weird guy that we were talking about that took us all over the place. Wasn't that Curso? Matt? Mm -hmm. Bon Air? Or the, what did we do in Bon Air? Was that the excursion with Stan? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we went to climb Bonaire and then in the afternoon. Yeah, Curacao, we went up and then did the crazy bridge thing. Yes, yes. Curacao. We walked over to the downtown area. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bridge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. the floating bridge. Yeah. yeah. So, like, and for me, crazy dude was an A excursion. That man was amazing. <laughs> Cuckoo, but a great excursion. The the boss was an A plus plus just because of the new people bringing them into that that world the underwater ish yeah. world. But that was a great excursion. And and who said that just now? I got to go back to uh, YouTube. Uh, 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 yes, that's that's at, in, in my like perfect right. They controlled the excursion. It was on their time. We can see the ship for the most part. That that was perfect. But if you're in Africa and you ain't never been there, like I didn't know they honestly, as an agent, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know they did it cruises in, in that region. I had no Not idea. I didn't either. Hmm? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I guess they kind of cruise everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Northern yeah. But I just didn't. It, when I do a when like I, I have customers that say, "Hey, I'm looking for something unique." Hmm. I didn't even know to look for Africa. Hmm. I'd like to cruise to New Caledonia. I'd like to just go to New Caledonia. I just want to be in a ship. Oh, I miss those. <laughs> It's just been saying. a lot of months since we've been on a ship, Matt. Since November. I know. Yeah, see, that's rough because, like, I don't have another cruise till December, and mm -hmm. I'm already like, frick, this sucks. <laughs> and I'm not even recovered from my cruise. <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, so yes, we were on the Viva out of San Juan. Um I gotta look at so what we did was oh hold there goes my cell phone. Um whoa, what's going on here? Um so we embarked out of San Juan, we went to Tortola, uh, which is the British Virgin Islands, then we went to St. John's Antigua, Bridgetown, Barbados, St. Lucia, and then I'm gonna try to pronounce that. Um, St. Martin, St. Thomas, and then back to St. Uh, to San Juan. Hmm. So no sea days. Um, the only day that we didn't do, we, we went in, in St. Martin. Jen and I got off ship. Um, cause Jen has this, her thing is a t-shirt for every port. Now we've been to St. Martin. And for whatever reason, she didn't have a T-shirt. So we had to go mm -hmm. find a T-shirt. Yeah. So we did a little shopping and then went back on the Viva. And on the Viva, and it's on the Prima as well, they have the observation deck. And I know you guys saw the picture, but I did have a little work to do. I had some customers that were a little bit needy. And uh, we sat up there. Mm -hmm. Was that? Was that? That was a sneeze. Was that Daffy <laughs> again? Donald. <laughs> um, we spent hours up there in the observation deck. And can like you saw that picture, right? Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. Can you sh can you share that, Kimbra? I'm trying to find it. So um, give me a moment. Are you looking in the chat? I've, I've got to find the chat with us all. Oh, it was gorgeous. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I, I will say this. Yes, I did. I have a couple beverages. See, I'm more you, blah, 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 blah. A couple <laughs> beverages that day. Yes, I did. Oh, here it is. But, and I'm going to send it. Can we I send it? it? Oh, you got it? Let's see. I don't care. Anybody and everybody can argue with me. But if you got to do work, that is the view of a lifetime. Hmm. And which, and which part is this again? That was St. Martin. Okay. It and, looks a lot like St. Thomas, really. Huh? It looks, it reminds me of St. Thomas. Like it's similar. It, the mountains yes, they're and similar. Stuff. They're not too left. far away from each other. Yeah. But yeah, when I went cool. to St. Martin before, that wasn't the pier that we docked at. It was wow. different. I've been but, to the I'm in the St. Louis. I mean, I've been to that thing. <laughs> Saint, you can't compare. Sorry to say, <laughs> no, I I got family in that area, but it's not the same. It's not <laughs> like as tropical. No, it's not. <laughs> but, not I mean, let's be real. You're chilling out on a cruise ship, having. A bourbon, a painkiller, a margarita, a mojito, whatever your drink of choice is, minus the jalapenos. Sorry, Matt. Um, I'm telling you what, ginger ale with jalapenos. I don't know why I haven't thought of this before. Like these raw jalapenos and this ginger ale, I'm digging it. But <laughs> I'm avoiding that comment. Just saying. Um, Got to do a little work. You're relaxing. I, we spent five, six hours up in that area. I had no worries in the world. And my client says that would be distracting for me trying to do work. <laughs> oh, trust me. I should have been done with that work an hour and a half. But I spent five or six hours in there. I've spent a lot of time in areas like that on ships drawing, like on, on my iPad or something. I like right? sitting in that kind of area and reading. Yeah, I like to draw. And then maybe I'll nap for a few minutes and then like I'll get up and draw some The more. one time I actually read. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if we would have had sea days, that's the spot. Yeah. I mean, that looks similar no to that area it's on like Royal. Rotterdam. Oh, it's, yeah. It's also, there's I like, love that space on Rotterdam. Areas on Royal, they're like that on most of the Royal ships. But yeah. Yeah, where? Those are always where? Nice where do you see that? On, where do you see that on Royal? So the Royal, most of the Royal ships, like the I don't know about the Oasis class, but they have like that section that's. What I know that what you're called? talking about. Um, it's like on the it's on the top level towards the back of the ship. Well, something was like it on Freedom front. or Brilliance? That we most of them. They, I I know I can't think of the name. They don't no. compare. They don't compare. But it's just um, like these open windows. Yes, because that's supposed to be an adult only section that you're talking about. Sometimes, yeah, it depends on the ship. Because I've been on some ships where like they that? won't. Well, that's that's different, but that's similar. But so it I've wasn't been on that ship. So it wasn't on this ship. We weren't on Freedom of the Seas, were we? Yes. Oh, we were. Yes. Oh, maybe it was that then. <laughs> That's why I looked up that oh, ship. Yeah, because that's I mean, the ship we were on. I've seen it on several royals, but well, we were, we've been on Brilliance and Freedom. Was mm -hmm. it on Freedom of the Seas? It's or Brilliance. That. Well, both of them. I, I know the area. It's in the bow. Yeah. It's enclosed. And, and yeah. let let I'll be honest. I'm not a royal fan. They yeah, make the biggest, baddest, baddest ass ships in the world. Icon Oasis. I'm not going to argue with that. It's just not my mojo. It's just not what I like. But it's a big um, open window that you can like. You have a panoramic view. Yes, yes. I, I've it, also seen that like on um, one of the one of the ships I did the spa package on. That might have been a Holland ship, and it was like they had a room for just relaxing. 
and it was like a big open just quiet space where you know this in the, the observation deck is it's not as open as what you get on royal right mm -hmm. because it doesn't have that full on i don't know what the heck you would call it but like this one has like Four chairs and a table, Shea Lounge, bunch of tables, Shea Lounge. This is more of a relax That's look at the what view. Had. It, yeah. it, it's it's pro and, and that makes sense. Yeah. That does make sense. Right the end was similar, yeah. Yeah. It was like a um, library area. Yeah, where we did the painting mm -hmm. and stuff. Just like a it's like a serenity. Oh my <laughs> serenity gosh, I love area. that shit. Yeah, like serenity 2.0. But relaxing, right? Indoors, yeah. And and oh, that's God. what this was. Hmm. And they had a coffee station. They hmm. do um, continental breakfast. It's a, just a little bit more relaxed. I know what you're talking about, especially on an Oasis class. That area is just really big. Mm -hmm. um, it has koozies and stuff, jacuzzis and stuff like that. This doesn't hmm. have all that. Yeah, the, the places I'm talking about are just like carpeted. There may be a bar. They're usually quiet. There's not a lot of people up there. Not on Royal Caribbean. Had, like, I, know, I know the area like, you're talking about on Royal Caribbean, yeah. but it doesn't, it's not as relaxing. It's not mm -hmm. as quiet. I can see Holland being like that. Um, but Norwegian, like that observation deck was definitely like that. Um, so let's let's talk about the viva right we we've kind of talked about the the ports of call but let, let's talk about whoa what happened oh what is that which one is That's that the area on the rotterdam that is a little deeper a little wider but it's got the same vibe i i don't even have it like just by seeing that that's the same vibe mm -hmm. right we got some chairs there's Love some coffee thing. and some beverages we probably on the inner side got some some bread and some muffins and some pastries for breakfast, but that's a chill vibe. On Royal, it's not so chill. It is on the older ships. It's like it's like that. Yeah. It's just a little space like that. The, it's, we've it's been on Allure, a, Oasis, and a couple other old like bigger ships. It's jacuzzis. It's not relaxed. Yeah, no, not, not on the older ones. On the other ones, it's just a little yeah. area like that, like carpeted with some seating. Yeah. And there may be a bar up there. Um, and sometimes it's closed unless you're in there, you know, and you're if you're in like a suite or their upper tier level. But, um, but yeah, but it's di different. I'm sure it's different on the Oasis class because those are ginormous. I'm just reading what what Stacy had said. People were worried about getting back in time. Um, so the Viva, right? That that was part of the reason why I booked this group. Outside of so many ports, which I paid the price for, um, you know, San Juan Viva new ship, so many ports. The Viva. So I, I posted like. The embarkation day, Jennifer and I woke up and it was, I, I slept in that day. There was daylight on the question you asked me today. I woke up and it was daylight. That's foreign to me personally. <laughs> so I said, hey, babe, we got hours and it looks so close. You want to walk over there? She's like, okay. So we walked over and we got to the fence line and we took a picture of the Viva. It is Inside and out, it's an absolutely beautiful ship, right? What Norwegian did was they took some steps back. With the Prima class, instead of going bigger, they went a little bit smaller. Hmm. I would liken it to the size of Spirit class, 960, 965 okay. feet, right? So it's a little bit smaller. I think they max out at 3,200, 3,500 people. Oh, cool. Okay. Unlike Excel class, we're what, 5,500 people? Something like mm -hmm. that. Now, where that was, I thought that was great. 
there was some deficiencies in the sense that, and, and I'm drawing a blank now. When we when we walk on an old carnival ship, what's that big area? Everybody's atrium. like, ooh, um, huh? The atrium. Atrium. Atrium is about three decks, hmm. and it's clean, it's white, and it's bright. It's beautiful. Where they failed was six, seven, eight are the main atrium decks. You've got the service desk. You've got excursions desk. You've got the next sale desk. You've got Starbucks on seven. And then my favorite on eight is the whiskey bar. Oh. Now, where they failed is the stairs. Deck six, the stairs on this side. Deck seven, the stairs on this side. Oh, no. <laughs> Deck eight. So it kind of reminds me of a fantasy class ship in that sense a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, so on embarkation day, I reached out to Norwegian. I said, hey, I've got the small, small group. I want us all to get together as a group on embarkation day. Good so they put us in. Huh? I was saying good night to Michael Ann. Oh. So what they did was they put us in, up in improv. Improv, right? That's the club, the comedy club area, improv. Mm -hmm. So we had 18, 20 people, plenty of space for that type of crowd. When we went to watch the comedian there, it only sat about 70 people ish. Oh. Right, very mm -hmm. small. Mm -hmm. So probably half, nah, 20 to 30% of people were standing during a, a comedy show. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very small venues. Mm -hmm. um, deck six, I think it's deck six, where the, what do we call it again? The atrium. Atrium bar. They did trivia they did like they call it something different but a love and marriage show okay very small area try to put a very popular show in mm. fail in my opinion mm. um the main theater i would say was a little small but they made it a multi-purpose space Oh, right. that's what they did on uh, Mardi Gras. Or no, that's what they did on Vista. That was a big mistake on Vista. So remember when we were kids in high school, we would go yeah. to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. And they would pull off the bleachers from the wall. And it would expand like 10 rows so you could fit right. everybody in the school. Well, same kind of thing, but it was electronic. Oh. But you still limit your space mm -hmm. just so you can have a dance club there at night. Right. Same kind of thing. So they small footprint for the most bang for your buck. But in my opinion, it really impacted that theater space. Yeah. That was a big knock on the, on the Vista. Is now we bad? did see um, Beetlejuice there. <laughs> Kimber's like, Oh, Beetlejuice. I see that look. And it was great. That's cool. That's like a proper like play. Yeah, I saw Beetlejuice in October. Like a Broadway, like a Broadway style play. Right. Not right. We saw Kimbra. We saw cats on Oasis mm -hmm. and we left. <laughs> what was this? Cats? I love cats. Did you? <laughs> I've never I'm seen I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll fix that. <laughs> For cats. <laughs> I'm not a Broadway person like you, but Jen loves that kind of stuff, and she asked me to leave. So it was pretty bad, in my in our opinion. But nonetheless, nonetheless, um, I think I like Cats because they really made it a little bit more 2024, like bit of use cussed a little bit, mm. just made it more up to date. And with what they had to do in that in that theater area, I think they did it really well. You know, so 
Um, I just felt the venues were smaller than what they should have been because I've been on, we'll say, spirit class, like I know you guys have, mm -hmm. and the theaters aren't tiny. Now, I know I'm comparing Carnival to Norwegian, but they're the same size. Right. Uh, but the amenities overall size-wise were smaller on Norway on the Viva, but they were much more upscale than what I've experienced on class uh, ships of that class on other cruise lines. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what else? Did no. they did they have more specialty restaurants? Since it's Norwegian, I'm thinking. So. Here's what we did. So where, where my concern is on all cruise lines and all ships is inclusive food offerings, right? Mm -hmm. Not just for me, but for my customers. Sure. And we're used to, and I know you guys have are similar, you know, since the pandemic, for the most part, for the most part, we've done Excel class ships, my favorite class. And there's just so much included food right it, it's difficult to go anywhere else now on the prima class they have a lot more offerings than when on other previous norwegian ships but on embarkation day i it was seven of us again we went to what they call indulgence food hall and what that is is I, I can't compare it to anything on Carnival, but you go to your table, there's an iPad there with many different types of food. Right? I didn't I, I meant to do the Indian, but I just didn't get to it this time. They have an they what is that where they cook the naan? Right? They get the naan bread and they put it on this fluffy thing and they I I don't know. But they have one of those things there. I'm not a big Indian food person, but okay. they, they went full out, right? We just never tried it. But you're supposed to be able to go to the indulgence food hall and order barbecue, <laughs> salads, Asian, Indian, bar Mexican, anything you want. Well, our experience on embarkation day is they also have that outside and our tablet didn't have Wi-Fi connection very well. So oh. what a 45 minutes to an hour turn in turn into three hours. Oh. <laughs> Weren't real happy with it. Now we yeah. did experience it multiple times inside during the cruise, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Mm. Huh. Interesting. All right. Um, but that food was good. Mm. Uh what else? Oh, the local, mm. which is a bar and grill. And you can go to the local bar and order bar type food, or you can go around the corner to the local restaurant and order anything from loaded nachos, fish and chips, salads. Now, Jen and I went there for breakfast numerous times because I wasn't really impressed with the breakfast buffet, mm -hmm. but I'm not impressed with the breakfast buffet anywhere, personally. It's just like, give me food, let me eat and go. And this is a sit-down restaurant. The, the nacho food was just a little bit better in the local. Okay. The nacho food, breakfast food, and the buffet and the uh, main dining room was even better. Mm -hmm. um, but like we go to local for lunch and not go to the buffet. Loaded nachos, which was excellent, which had chili, guac, jalapenos, everything you could think of. You would have probably liked it. Um, like I would get the no loaded nachos. For lunch and the fish and chips minus the chips so to have a really good combination of foods hmm. um for specialty dining what we did was because this was on our anniversary our 15th anniversary so anniversary night we ate at los lobos the mexican restaurant okay now we were trying to get cagney steakhouse but it wasn't available so we chose this other other place and it, the food was better than shebang. 
Oh, wow. wow. Okay. It I blew Shebang it. out of the water. Huh. And I, you, I love Shebang. Yeah. Um, but where they faltered, though, was on Carnival. If you get too much food, they'll let you take it back to your room. They don't care. Hmm. So what we did was you get one, two starters, a main, and two sides, and then dessert. So we each ordered a guac because in my head, I'm taking guac back to the room. And <laughs> you know, when I get up early, they're gonna give me some chips and I'm gonna eat guac at three or four o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna be fat and happy. The, the, the server said, oh no, one's enough for both of you. I said, bro, I will put this over everything. I want two, <laughs> one for me, one for her. But they didn't allow us to take it back. So mm -hmm. he was right. I was wrong. But I was trying to live my best fat life. <laughs> they just didn't let me. And then I got the queso bandito. Mm -hmm. And it's that melted cheese with this red seasoning and three little mini tortillas. Okay. Now, they had their salsa was just the best salsa. You wouldn't have liked it because it doesn't have enough heat. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was the best salsa I'd ever had at any Mexican restaurant hmm. from Florida to San Diego to Tijuana, Mexico. That it was, was yummy. Hmm. So I'm getting this queso bandito, pouring on my little tortilla with the salsa. <laughs> I was in, I was in heaven. And then I got a red. I got the the ground the ground beef burrito, which I don't normally do, but. It sounded authentic. So I got my burrito. I put my guacamole and I put my salsa. And I ate everything I could. Let me tell you something. I didn't get dessert. We went back to the room that night. I took every piece of clothing off except for my underwear and just laid there for an hour or two until I could move. <laughs> the food was yummy. Oh, that's good. Oh, it was great. Um, they also do a teppanyaki, but Carnival has spoiled me with, especially with the quality and the price, because mm -hmm. qual the the teppanyaki on Extra Class is thirty eight dollars. Right. The teppanyaki on here was like fifty five dollars, oh, so we wow. skipped it. Um, they had a seafood place. We skipped it because with the with the free at sea, you get two. Special dinings, right? And you you can choose your free at sea options. So we went with the drink package, which unlike Carnival is unlimited, mm -hmm. and every bar pretty much had Buffalo Trace. So I was happy. Mm -hmm. Now at the whiskey bar, they did have um, Pappy Van Winkle, which I don't know if you know about Pappy. I know it's really hard to find and usually expensive. $395 a pour. Whew. That's one ounce. Huh. So I told the bartender, I'll pass because I wanted it. Right. But at $395, no, 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 no. no, no. Would kill no. Me, and I'm <laughs> not that stupid. So uh, anyways, anyways. Um, so last night we went to Cagney's. If you haven't experienced Cagney's before, because you've not cruised on Norwegian, I don't think. I have. I've I've been to Cagney's. So we'll 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 refrain for a second. I will say this to you: Cagney's is the best steak I have ever had. Period. Wow. Not at sea. <laughs> period. I had the prime rib. Jennifer had the ribeye, my two favorite cuts, and they are the best steak I've ever had. Jennifer, for her hors d'oeuvre, had the crab cake. I know you guys are not seafood people. <laughs> She's a crab cake fanatic, and she says it's, it's the best crab cake she's ever had. <laughs> now, she also yeah. had the lobster bisque, and she said it was horrible. So it balances out. But Cagney Steakhouse 
and I've had it on three different Norwegian sailings, is the best steak I've ever had, period. Wow. Period. That's, <laughs> that's, that's saying a lot for anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, with the free SC that they offer, I wish Carnival would do something similar to this. It's kind of Norwegian's thing, though. Is that yeah, but Princess does it. Package thing. Yeah. Princess does it. You can get standard, you can get plus, or you can get premier. Hmm. Why doesn't Carnival Cruise Line do the same thing? Right. Why doesn't Royal do the same thing, too? But, you know, it's just, it's the best bang for your buck. You don't have to pay for it separate. Because let's be real. So on this cruise, I got the pick three. Pick three? Yes. Which gave me the unlimited drink package, which they have two packages. They got the, the free at sea one, and they've got a next step up. And all that next step up does is it pays for it pays for um, coffee, um, Starbucks, hmm. and it pays for things like Blanton's. But the cost difference is like five hundred dollars for the week, and most bars didn't have all that alcohol, that other beverages, those other alcohols, so it wasn't worth it to me. No, no, um, Buffalo, then who cares? Yeah, right, exactly. And then it covered what else? Two nights dining, and it covered oh, we had fifty dollars credit per excursion, hmm. so. Say you go to an example, St. Thomas, and the two of you book an excursion, and the total price is two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We, the only one left. <laughs> did we bore we're, everybody? Sorry. Well, we're after we're seventeen minutes after, so a lot of our people go over to down under cruisers. Oh, now oh. there says three though. So who knows? <laughs> Wake up, Stacy. Keep with us. <laughs> um, and I, I'll start cutting the shirt. Um, you know, so the, the bang for your buck, I mean, so if I didn't take that, the, the free at sea, I think I saved like $600 ish. I'm going to drink that. Jen's going to drink that in coffees. Now in the free at sea, you don't get the coffee, the 12, cause that's a separate package, 1250 a day. Yeah. Yeah. It was worth it for me. Now, going to the next package, another 500 bucks, it wouldn't have been worth it. Although that does cover Starbucks. Yeah. So, so let's go ahead and wrap up because we are over. Yeah, but you're going to you're gonna do this. You're going to go over all this too in your podcast, right? Yes. I'm, we're going to – Jen. Jen's been under the weather. I don't know if she got it in the airport, on the airplane – uh, Stacy told me today. Oh, hopefully she hasn't gotten dengue fever. She oh, doesn't geez. have the same. The same uh, um, what is that? The sicknesses. I, I can't think straight. Um, symptoms. symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have the same symptoms. No fever. No vomiting. So in, in the airport, we did have to wait for quite a few hours. So I think she got something <laughs> in the airport. Probably. Like your cough right there. Um, <laughs> that was just because I got injury all down the wrong pipe. No, you got dengue <laughs> fever. Um, but it, you know, she doesn't, you know, it, it, and like in past cruises left over the last few years, we have come home with a cold. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe if you extra dose of vitamin C, you might not. I don't know. So I, I told. I told Stacy today I've been drinking uh, orange juice, pineapple juice, and uh, Brugal all day and all week, so I'm covered because of all the extra orange juice. So. <laughs> Sterilization—that's your <laughs> technique. That's right? what I say. Extra vitamin C, and I'm I'm sterile. We're good to go. <laughs> that's my story. Just to tell her to get well soon. We'll, we'll extend that as well. I'm that's I'm it. sure tomorrow we're gonna record because I've been waiting on her. <laughs> Just to feel a little bit better. So yeah, hopefully yeah. tomorrow morning early we can record and I can get it posted tomorrow or something. Okay. So we'll 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 tell people that then to look for the new episode of C Days coming out in the next few days, probably. 
uh, that will go yeah. over those creeks? That's and, that's the plan. You, you know, you guys know just like I do. I, you know, last month or so, I've been on the road a lot. You know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm now home and going to be home a lot more. And unfortunately, when you're driving truck and and trying to run the run the travel agency, it's difficult to balance yeah. all three. So now that I'm home more, I, you know, we, we can put out some more input, uh, more mm -hmm. content. I've got somebody on waiting so we can do a review on icon of the seas as well. So yeah, nice. something more soon. Cool, man. Well, look, thanks for, thanks for coming on. Thanks for hanging out. We kind of missed you cause you've been gone for a while anyway. So yeah. it was good catching up and, uh, uh, yeah, I guess we already set up a check out C days podcast. Uh, you also have a Facebook uh, group, and uh, yeah, and uh, you, I'm awake. And you ask me, you know, I'm going to be here. There you go. <laughs> All right, we'll go. We'll. Oh, what? I'm going to say, have a good night. Oh yeah, we'll go ahead and sign off for everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you're still here, not over at down under cruisers, then that means that you really love us. Yeah. <laughs> if you're down under cruisers, that's okay because we love them too. But we will see you guys next week with Mama Sandy. Nice. Right here. Nice. All right, guys. Cool. Yeah. Way past Kimber's bedtime. Good show. That's true. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, struggling. Go. See, we got people here. They're just All working right. in the background. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.